Yeah, hi. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late, uh, very late night, basically early morning, late at a date, because this might be uploaded in the morning instead. Raw review. It's the last raw before Survivor Series War Games. Um. Yeah. I know since last year they've been trying to do it. They've been doing Survivor Series now after Thanksgiving. You know, used used to be like before Thanksgiving, or and I know earlier back in the days when it originally started, it was on Thanksgiving or it was like basically the day before or stuff like that. I don't mind it being actually now like after Thanksgiving it gives you something to look forward to with your friends, families, and loved ones after in the holiday time. So. It's okay, you know. I just don't want it to be always war games. Even though I would rather the war games shit than Raw versus SmackDown bullshit or whatever. I guess that's the advantage. But, you know, I guess they're trying with it. But, yeah. Did Raw try to make the show better? I guess, like, I would say the Raw was better than usual. It just didn't mean the show was, like, great or really good. I would say the show was, like, whatever. It wasn't a bad show. Well, it was pretty boring still. Like, not a great show at all. Far from being good. But it was definitely better than last week because you had things that happened on the show that were eventful. Such as the opening, the main event, the main event segment. Um, yeah. So it wasn't really a terrible show at all, uh, like uh, as a whole. Definitely better than uh, than the past. Like definitely better than a lot of Raws this year. So I I, I would probably go on to say that. Grabbing Coca Cola's, drinking my new sleeve, spying missing bits. Go oh shit oh shit cheers. Oh shit oh shit cheers. good stuff but yeah as a go home show it definitely makes you you know a little bit hyped or whatever make you looking forward to the pay-per-view which is what they should done they, they should do could the build could survivor series have been a bit better as the things to improve absolutely but it wasn't really a terrible show as a whole so yeah i can't really complain i mean it was still pretty boring but yeah, but it wasn't like it completely sucked. It still was pretty much kind of sucked, but it was still like not the worst. So the show started with Drew McIntyre, and it actually, again, this is what was good. It needed to start with Drew McIntyre. And he cut a good promo uh, establishing his new role in, in his career now as a supposed heel. He, he may have seemed, seemed like, a, like a tweener a bit, but he basically is a heel now. Drew McIntyre says... Uh, he says, you know, I'm not Dominic Mysterio, so you gotta listen to what I've got to say. You know, if you're a better fan of me, you don't need to, exp I don't need to explain myself uh, to you. Uh, and if you turn on me, that's on you. Um, so it, it's not that hard to why I did what I did. Uh, as, uh, you know, like the I, I but the difference is I did it with, with Jay used to look, uh, look at him in the eye. I do what I did. You know, Jay, uh, people say, oh, you got to move on or whatever. You know, uh, but like, uh, I can't move on with the past 16 years that I'm in uh, Clash of the Castle. I came home to my family, you know, after all the sacrifices I made for them. The, 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 the 16 years after seeing them, that they took, that the bloodline took away my moment with my family. Basically saying, like, you know, him letting it go and whatever. But basically mentioning how it's kind of like justified because, like, you know, Jey Uso is part of the reason why his opportunity was taken. Him becoming world champion, him defeating the bloodline, getting things done, getting attacked by the bloodline even, obviously, like, yeah. Like, it wasn't just that, that, those type of issues. It's like, whenever the, he's involved with the bloodline, they always basically dealt with, they always, 
kind of ruin plans. So, so even I think even like winning tag titles and shit like that. So you know, justifying the idea. So it's like a justifiable heel turn, but you understand what the fuck you, the you. It's an understandable reason why. So it almost makes him seem like a tweener sense. But he certainly is a heel since he is lining with the bad guys, you know? So, yeah. He said, uh, he then eventually says that, but then people wonder, it, it, what, uh, is Drew McIntyre a part of the Judgment Day? Yes or no? And then, like, he asks the crowd, that, and then he, he says, no. But I will be in the, um, the team on War Games. And he says, why? Because Rhea gave me a chance that no one else would. Uh, uh, me locked in a cage with Jey Uso. So he doesn't care what God uh, what God Jey believes in, but it's ours. belongs to Drew McIntyre. Uh, and, he ha and how he's going to basically like destroy him or whatever. And, um, it's, a, it's a good promo. Probably... The best, one of the best promos I've seen all year. Definitely, he, uh, you know, this real heel turn could help justify, make him look good. Definitely, McIntyre hasn't felt important in a long time now, or compared to now. So, this is hopefully going to help him. This is good, you know? This is good stuff. Um, Jey Uso comes out. The problem is he was kind of being a little goofy, like, for no reason. It's like... Bro, you this guy cost you your title match. You know what? Oh yeah, Ma uh, McIntyre did says, you know, uh, I can't move on. You know, uh, you should move on, uh, Jay. You know, like I cost you the match, right? But then, like you know, I should also blame Cody for bringing you, uh, whatever. I don't know. Like he's sorry about Cody, but then he should blame him for any way for bringing him in onto Raw, or whatever. So J Jay also comes out. He says. Yeah, nah, you know, you, you don't, you don't, you don't me, yo, you don't me, it's just me personally, she, you know, like, you know, I, I, I don't put time talking, you know, talk is done, it's time for a beat down, you better get eat down, like, it's like, bro, okay, like, this yeet shit needs to calm down, like, for, for, for a sec, the guy cost you the world, uh, cost you your tag title match, right? You guys are having issues, and you didn't even fuck it. And he did mention how, you know, he never heard uh, Jey Uso saying sorry to him. Like, one-on-one, -on -one to, like, you know? Like, shouldn't that be what's going on? Just saying, but I don't know, whatever. He says, eat, you know, let's have, let's have a eat down or whatever. But then the Judgment Day comes to McIntyre's side, but then all the baby faces who are on the War Games team comes out. Obviously, they're, they're outnumbered. They all come out one by one, which, which you know, we have to get. We have to wait for them to have their entrances. Which, okay, whatever. But then Adam Pearce and the security comes out like, no, 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 we're not gonna have this happening and whatever. And if anybody fights, then they lose their war games advantage or whatever. And then Adam Pearce asks that one of each team to ha volunteer who is gonna be taking the having the advantage match. Uh, and then. Mentions how Team Cody has uh, no uh, has one man down, and that by the end of the night there needs to be a real a fifth participant. You see, back in the day, or I would definitely complain that why not save this opportunity for Survivor Series? But I do understand why they did this. I do understand why they did this, and I think you know what. Whether they did this way or not, it kind of makes people still in, in treatment care. And you know what? It's good that they're saving the appearance at Survivor Series. I know a lot of people are angry, but whatever. But they basically confirmed the certain person who's returning at Survivor Series. Which basically was shut down all those CM Punk rumors or whatever. Which is basically why they did what they did. It's because of CM Punk. Because they, it's going to be in Chicago. So yeah, McIntyre step forward and seems to volunteer, and he wants Jay Uso like indicating like face to face or whatever. So yeah, Nia Jax the feature Raquel Rodriguez. The match was just no, I did not give a fuck about this match, but get it? It was two big women. Well, one of those very fucking big, humongous to the point that you know she probably weighs the size of an elephant. 
The other is just, you know, big, like, you know, she had tall women, you know, right? I didn't get, I didn't care. I don't. I'm sorry. McIntyre volunteers and says, I'm the, uh, you know, uh, I want to be, uh, I want to volunteer. You know, I, I, and then Mac, Dean Priest like, you know, I, I don't trust you or whatever. You know, after what happened, you cost me all the time. But, you know, let me make it up to you. Like, I'll buy, take the advantage. I want you so, or whatever. And then, Mom, then Rhea Ripley says, like, you know, I trust you or whatever. Or, like, or, and then Dean Priest like, gives him the opportunity. He's like, that's a leader. And Dan Priest like, accepts because he's like the leader of the, the match for some reason. I don't know, whatever. It all seems like, shouldn't Balor be the leader, supposedly? You would think like, Balor's like the leader of the Judgment Day, isn't he, or something? I don't fucking know. Cody, okay, Rollins says he wants to face uh, McIntyre, but then Jay Uso's like, no, no, he, me, I, I want my, we, you know, he made a personal mean. I want to face him tonight. And then he kept insisting, and eventually he gets the blessing. And then, then the once when Jay Uso gets the blessing, and also like, oh, who did? Who can they? Find? Now they have to find who will be the fifth opponent. They said they all know people. And then Cody mentions how he has an old friend who would come through as the fifth member. Member, basically teasing that you know, a certain person who does RKOs is returning. You know, so yeah. Becky Lynch defeat Xia Li, who which Xia Li's pr fucking entrance looks like fucking shit. I don't know if I mentioned this, but how gosh, she looks like a goof for her stupid entrance. Get it? They added lightning, but like people are not seeing lightning in the fucking arena. It just looks so fucking stupid. It legit looks like a fucking terrible. It literally looks like the last Airbender without the fucking airbend without the bending. You know, that she's trying to bend without fucking any powers, barely. And it also just looks like a lame fucking version of trying to be Power Ranger-esque fucking posings. It looks so fucking stupid. Whatever, Becky Lynch be defeats her. Is he at least supposed to fucking have an NXT title match tomorrow? Like, who gives a shit? Or today, I don't fucking know. Who gives a fuck? The, but then... Damage control shows up and, and attacks Becky Lynch. Then, you know, I would think maybe, wow, this may lead to maybe like Becky Lynch not going to compete, you know. It could be some distant thing like that. But then, oh, all of a sudden, Bianca, Charlotte, and Shotzi's on Raw for God knows what reason. Like, how did they know they were to attack Becky? And, you know. Yeah, a brawl. Big brawl breaks out for the women. Who gives a shit? Johnny Gay Garner defeats Louis Kaiser. Whatever. 99 for Antigua Knox won some fatal four-way bullshit tag match to earn a shot with the women's champs. There are too many women's matches, by the way, tonight. Too many women's matches. Which is like, nah. Who gives a fuck? They defeated, I think, Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile. Candice LaRoe. And LaRue, yeah. But LaRue and Indy Hartwell. And I think Contana Chance and Casey Carter. I don't fucking know. I think, yeah. One Ninja Warrior bitch, whatever. Adam Pierce makes a gay da tag team turmoil for God knows what reason. Great. Tag team turmoils after Thanksgiving. Like, people are going to be excited for tag team turmoils. With jobber tag teams. All the jobber tags are arguing for God knows what reason. Who gives a shit? Early in the show, fuck it on Imperium, like, argues with each other. I don't fucking know. No, do I care. Um, but then, anyways, The Miz comes out. He talks about how, you know, oh, you know, uh, whether you like me or, or do you, we have an opportunity to entertain each and every one of you or whatever. And then basically Gunter comes out. Uh, Gunter, what he did, what did Gunter do, huh? Oh yeah, fucking, yeah, the, all the bunch of tag teams are gonna have a fucking gay tag team turmoil, whatever. So yeah, the Miz and, uh, Miz and uh, Gunter have a face-to-face. -face. Um... Gunter then says, little, little Mike Mazan got bullied in high school because you idolized those legends. Like, they, because they, I get it, the Miz mentioned all the great legends who are former Intercontinental Champions. 
Then after high school, you came to wrestling, met all those legends, and they bullied you because you didn't belong in this sport. So, which, I mean, it's kind of true. It did kind of happen, didn't it? And then Gunter says, you know, like, you're, you don't belong. You are, you are, you're nothing. You're, you're, you're just an entertainer. Well, I'm a sports, well, I'm a, I'm a wrestler, you know. I'm a, you know, get it, because he, get it? He's not a sports entertainer. He's, you know, in the face with the, with the mask, not with, on the mic. Like, that's what people want to see. Then just like, you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, Gunter, he is a great example of, like, not just the entering general, but like freaking he could be like he has that presence. But he's also like freaking talking well too, so in a way you gotta have have both, right? But I mean, I don't know why is he bashing that. Like how did he how is he getting fucking people to care about him if it's not just his wrestling too, you know? It's like his presence. Everything that makes him good, you know, that pe make people care for a wrestler. It's not just like oh you know, uh you know I'm a I'm a great boy in the sport. Because I mentioned this is a sport. So all the smart kids say this is a sport. Like, shut up. Um, Miz then has a cut. Pastor was like, I'm going to do whatever I taste to become the Intercontinental Champion again. And blah, blah, blah. You know, him becoming this fucking, you know, fighting baby saves. And the fans saying USA is like, whatever. Gunter then pushes him around. Whatever. You know, basically treating him like he's like nothing. But then Miz like, oh god, oh, Jesse Miz is coming back. He got pushed that far, and then Gunter it kicks him, and then he it fix Miz is up. Miz does a low blow with the back of the of his back uh, of the his knee, and then he does the skull crusher. Fast. I'm like, yeah, Miz, do it. And then Michael Cole's like, yeah, I'm done, but Miz, yeah, do it for all the weirdos. I'm like, shut up, fucking Michael Cole. And I literally got fucking, I literally got. A recap in my memory that the fuck that Michael Cole when he was a gay fucking heel clapping for the Miz like yes Miz the fucking future of the wrestling business Miz the best money in the bank of history the WWE championship in history I I never been so proud of Miz the Miz yeah Miz oh yes the Miz one of the best talents I ever seen like he's like clapping for the Miz what a beautiful talent I want to suck my I want to have to suck my prostate there John. I literally got that fucking flashback with Michael Cole. It's like, oh, God, help me. Like, it was so stupid. I'm doing it for all the weirdos out there. And Wade Bear's like, what, you mean you're included? Like, what are you fucking... Yeah, for all the weirdos. Like, let me... I don't fucking know. Anyways, whatever. Um... Obviously, this means this is gonna lose. So, there you go. So much for the weirdos. I mean, fuck it. Fuck the weirdos, though, you know? All the weirdos are smarks. Nakamura defeats Chad Gable. Whatever. Um, Sami Zayn backstage, along with Rollins, like, are like, oh, they try to check who, who who's available. They, they, they couldn't get anybody. But then, uh, Cody says, his person is, is, is all for it. You, you like, wonder, oh, who, who, who are the people? Like, did Sammy contacts uh, Owens or whatever? Ron's co trying to contact people. And, you know, why, who who were the people they tried to contact and they couldn't do it, you know? They did mention, oh, our SmackDown people are also uh, uh, also available to be picked or whatever. But, you know, what? I don't know. Let me see. Bronson reach out as Ivar. Like, whatever. Okay, who cares? The main event, knock, um, McIntyre defeats Jey Uso for the War Games Advantage match. It was fine. It was a fine match. I was thinking, and this is, I understand they probably, you know, why they want to keep a Jey Uso to make people care, right? Obviously, I would not mind, you know, definitely, like, keeping Jey in the match uh, as long as they were to add, you know, more people in the Judgment Day group, like the Bloodline members. That would give them something to do, and you could always add to the men's War Games match, not just the mystery of last person, right? Which you could have probably you still tease for Survivor Series, but it would have been great if they added, like, Kevin Owens, LA Knight, just to make it all come full circle with Kevin Owens, since Kevin Owens was, in, was involved after all before, and LA Knight, you know, because, you know, with the bloodline shit, whatever. 
basically people have been involved with the bloodline, and the last could be with Ro like Wharton, maybe I don't know something like that. Uh, basically, make it I, sure it would make it fucking I think eight on eight, but it would I wouldn't mind that because it would make people care some some in some sense, um, especially with the story, especially with the affiliation of the Judgment Day and the Bloodline, um, and you can't even have seen it anyways, but it, but like it would make it would still be a perfect amount of people, right? Um, what I would have done. Is I would even done maybe like Jey Uso getting legit hurt during this match, or fuck it, not, or you had done something where to establish McIntyre's new heel persona, he should have basically destroyed Mac uh, Jey Uso, costing him an opportunity to be part of the match. That way we could eventually open announce that maybe Kevin Owens will replace him, and then the mystery return could have happened at Survivor Series, but they still tease it in a sense, you know. And that way we could probably still get like kind of two. Oh, who are the two people? But it could be revealed like on SmackDown. Owens could be joining, but then you know it's already revealed basically who's gonna be joining. You know, based on what happened tonight. That's what I would have done, and then because because again, even though it they did already kind of show that oh Jay Uso's reaction because you know based on. Him being the reason why a certain wrestler is not uh, who hasn't been around for a, a while, and who's announced to basically be teaming them, that was a good facial expression, showing like you know storytelling and all that in that kind of sense. But you want to establish McIntyre's heel run, they should have basically fucking had him, had him destroy Jey Uso in a sense to basically establish some dominance. But whatever, I don't know. Uh, or like bring heel heat and that way it would lead to maybe McIntyre versus Jey Uso in a future match sure you know McIntyre won him in the cage right but he could always done something where he basically destroyed the point that he won't make it to war games and then eventually maybe I like the Royal Rumble it'll be McIntyre versus Jey Uso like Jey Uso returns in a sense before like around the new year time uh, after like to be selling the injury and they have like cage match in some sense it could be even the rumble stuff like that that's how i would be, be booking in a sense but anyways mcintyre he does defeat jay uso with the future shot ddt we haven't seen that way him winning often in a long time with that like usually i think the last time he actually won with future shot was like fucking against the miz a few months ago then eventually he takes him out again, but takes moves the announce table is about to power bomb into the table. But then Jey Uso basically hits him. He was gonna get the chair. Then the Judgment Day comes out and attacks him. But then Team Cody comes out to save Jay, and then they all retreat after hitting them with some chairs. And then Cody basically says, "You know, you know, uh, the fifth man." He basically says this. He says, I don't, uh, whatever. I I'm trying to remember what he basically said. So, Cody basically, he teased, like, who was, who was returning, even though the person didn't return, right? But he says, I have an old friend who will be coming in who's a certain, uh, whatever he said. He said that. He basically mentioned Randy Orton terms, okay? That, uh, oh yeah, well, here's what he mentioned. He mentioned that, oh, you know, I, my friend who's uh, who's joining our team has, me and him has a certain legacy with each other, which I can't believe that people are fucking getting nostalgic over legacy. Like, really? You're all getting nostalgic over legacy? Like, why? And y'all could be his prey... And he is the apex predator. And you know, and then, uh, and yes, you, 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 you may be here voicing this, and po hear vo you may hear voices, but, uh, sh but fucking, the crowd knows who the hell he is. And the show ends like from there, they're like basically running out of time. But they basically teased that Randy Orton, or they kind of confirmed based on his wording, that Randy Orton is returning at Survivor Series War Games. I know fans are probably disappointed to not see him, but if anything, it's better to probably mention him. That way people don't get angry that, oh, see you see a punk and kind of hijack his return in a sense. So I understand why they did that. 
They did it to basically keep people intrigued for Survivor Series. Like, oh my god, Orton is coming back. Orton, you know? Make people intrigued for that. Like, based on the teases. Like, now it's official he's returning. But they're saving that moment where his music hits. That big moment that Orton officially returns. I actually don't mind that. I think how they handled it was good. You saved the big moment where we finally hear Orton's music after a long time. Him ha making his entrance is it's good, you know. And you and what I liked about this was Jey Uso, his facial expressions. Like when he s found out, you know, Randy the Randy Orton terms, he basically had it like a look. And again, it's going back to Jey Uso and Randy Orton. I'm not saying that during the match they should fucking fight each other or whatever. It causes dissension between each other. But what they should do is basically, yeah, you could have like, oh, oh my, oh wow. You know, that whole bullshit that, oh, you know, oh wow. This is the same man who costed him his career for one, one and a half years being off, off WWE, whatever. But then after the match, you can always do that arc out of nowhere to Jey Uso. And then fucking Orton just sneaks me out and like, yeah, he poses. And he still like kind of is like a baby face in a sense. But that would lead to the, you know, Jey Uso and Orton feuding for a bit. Which I would not mind. But yeah. But obviously they should probably continue the McIntyre Uso feud for a little bit, I think. Maybe to keep that going. If you're not going to, again, I understand I pitched like an injury angle, but if you're not going to do that, I mean, that's one of the things you could do, but hey, it's still okay what they're doing right now. But I would say, you know, have Uso, have J, Mac feud with McIntyre, and maybe Orton at the same time in a sense, so like that could lead to stuff, you know, a bunch, bunch of possibilities. It just, again, it would have been nice if the bloodline were still involved in this match. That way fucking Orton would be, like, concentrating on, like, guys like Jimmy and Solo, right? That would be nice. Heck, obviously, Roman, if he was in this fucking match, but no. They're not having Roman on this show for God knows what reason. And they're not having fucking the bloodline in this match. So they're doing nothing with the bloodline. They're probably not going to do anything with LA. No, I don't fucking know. Because it would make more sense he's joined. Like, why is he fucking feuding with the Judgment Day? You know what I mean? Aside for Cody. Like, only true reason could be Jay? I don't know. But it just would have been better if the Bloodline was still what was it part of the Judgment Day's group. And that would have been, like, more better. But, I don't, I don't know. Whatever. At least they tease Orton, and that's a good thing, I would think. Especially because of, like, the punk shit or whatever. But, you know. It's a good tease. It's a good, like, yes... Now it's confirmed he's returning, basically. Without basically, you know, saying his name. But we know he's returning. Now make people actually fucking care to watch the virus series in a sense. So, yeah. So it's not bad. Like the ending. Like the main event a bit. Like the match and the, and the segment. The opening was actually really, was actually good. Definitely nice change of pace. Especially with McIntyre now as a heel. Uh, it helped it, his establishing himself. The Miz... Gunter thing was okay. It's just like, eh. You know what I mean? But yeah, some of the matches were pretty... So the show was uh, was not great. It wasn't the worst. But it was far from like being really that good. Or good in general. Some people are saying this was a good show. Disagree. I still thought the show was kind of boring. Pretty boring for the most part. But there were some intriguing things happening in the show to make you care about the Bill for Survivor Series. So there you go. So it wasn't the worst show, but it still was pretty boring. Kind of bad still, in my honest opinion. But then completely suck like like last week or a week prior. Basically, like most of Raw, like how most of Raws were like basically the entire year, you know, or a year in general. So it's one of the few Raws where it's not the worst Raw of all time, but it wasn't like great either, you know. But yeah, Orton's coming back. It's official. Um, yeah, it's gonna be good. Good to see. Hopefully. You know, they're eventually going to probably do Orton versus Reigns, which is definitely a match that they should do. I know they're going to try to do, do Cody versus Roman at Re WrestleMania, but I feel like, fuck, who should win the Royal Rumble? Fuck, have Orton win. He'll, he'll, him fake, again, the story. Have him versus Roman at WrestleMania. You could always do Ro Roman Rock Night 2 or something like that. Cody, in the meantime, to get his, finish his story... He should fucking win the money in the bank. That's what I would do. I don't know why he didn't win money in bank. I don't know. Something. Something. You know what I mean? 
just like Cody versus Roman would be too predictable to do again. Just saying. Um, yeah, I don't know. Some people say, oh, they might do the Royal Rumble or versus R Roman, but it's just like, I feel that opportunity idea of Orton probably winning the Rumble match would be okay. Just, you know. Oh, who could win the Rumble? Like, Cody would be too predictable. Only fucking two people who seem to be good to win the Rumble are, R are Orton or maybe fucking even CM Punk to challenge Rollins. That, that's like the only possibility. Oh, it should be Gunter! Like, I like Gunter, but calm down, people. Let him lose the Intercontinental title first or whatever, you know? And plus, I think that's just too much a smarky match. Him versus Rollins. I don't think it will draw much. Yet. Not yet, you know? It's just how it is. Anyways, I'll just keep it real. Get your games of course, by Miss Spice and Miss Bitches go, oh shit, oh shit. That's what I'm gonna say. Um, so, Ord is coming back. We'll see what happens. I have voices in my head. They make me. Uh, they make me do things you can't understand. They make me rape. Everybody has fuck. Uh, the only problem about this is like now you're gonna get all the fucking Orton and Cody fan fiction. It's like, oh, it's so fucking gay. That's what I hate about this. Stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, it's so gay. Anyways, Orton's coming back. Good for him. Good stuff. Uh, I, I don't know. Hopefully, do some good things with him. All right, I'll say till next time. Peace. Yeah, bye.